Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the TN Leader Capacity Building. This is the sixth episode and let's just review a little bit before we start. So what is the objective of this episode? It's to understand our core as an organization, understand our role as team leader, to get the knowledge and skills to be the best team leader and to become experts in team management. So the topic for today is leadership development model. I'm very excited about this episode because I really like our leadership development model and I really feel that we need to become experts in it. If we are saying that we're developing leadership, we should understand this better. So what is the leadership development model? Here we have a picture of the LDM, as we call it in short. So basically what it means is uh, um, this is the qualities that we believe that a leader should have. And this is the qualities that in Isaac you are able to develop. So through your member experience, through your team leader experience, through any role that you get in ISEC, and also through the exchanges that we do. So it's not only the members, but also the, the EPs that we send or that we receive. You are developing these leadership qualities. What are the leadership qualities that, uh, that are part of the model? Empowering others, solution-oriented, world citizen and self-aware. The idea is for you to be able to develop and uh, improve in each one of these. But each uh, leadership development quality also has three elements so that we can be more specific about, okay, what does each one mean? So the first one is self-aware. It, uh, it has understanding and living personal values, focusing on strengths over weaknesses and exploring one's passion. For empowering others, we have communicating effectively in diverse environments, develop and empower other people, engage with others to achieve a bigger purpose, and we have in world citizen believes in their ability to make a difference in the world, interested in world issues, and enjoying taking responsibility for improving the world. Lastly, solution-oriented, it's adapting and showing resilience in the face of challenges, transmitting positivity to move forward throughout uncertainty, and taking risks when it is needed. So what does, why are, am I sharing these three elements? Because in order to be able to develop the leadership qualities, you need to understand also what the elements that they, they have. And you have to put a plan for yourself, for your members, to be able to develop each one of these elements. So it's not only about the quality in, in itself, but the elements that it has inside. So if your member, for instance, is kind of low in self-aware, okay, but which one of the elements it's kind of low because maybe he can be very good at focusing on strengths over weaknesses, but then maybe he's lost about what, are, what is his passion or what are his values in life. So we need to identify what are actually the, the things that we want to develop. So let's go one by one. So the first one in self-aware is personal values. What does this mean? It means that if you go to a person and you ask them, what are your values in life? They can be self-aware about which ones they are. What are the values that are driving their life, their decisions, their actions? So I will give you an example. For my case, my values are passion, perseverance, and ethics. And this is something that I decided a long time ago. And these values are literally driving every single thing that I do in my life. So if I'm not doing something with passion, then I have to review it with myself. What, why am I doing this? So this is the idea to have personal values. What are the things that actually drive you in each action that you have, in each conversation, each discussion, in each decision that you take? Strength of weaknesses. This is a very good one. It's about focusing on what you are good at, focusing on the, things, the good things that you have uh, in your personality, in your way of being, over the weaknesses. Instead of focusing on, I'm not good at this, I cannot do this, I am scared, uh, Instead of focusing on the things that we are bad at, we focus on the things that we are good at. What are these things, these strengths that we have that can actually benefit the team, benefit the world, benefit yourself? And you focus on that and you work on them so that this, they become much, much, much bigger than the weaknesses. And this can actually lead to your full potential being accomplished. And the last one is exploring one's passion. Each one of us needs to have a purpose in life and needs to have a passion in life. If, we, if our actions are not driven by passion, then we will not do them with the same love and intention. And if we're not doing it with the same love and intention, of course we're not gonna fulfill our humankind potential. So imagine if every single person in the organization did uh, the things that they are passionate about, how much energy, how much momentum will they gain with this, and how much closer they will be to fulfilling their potential. 
Then we have empowering others. So the first one was focusing about you because to be a leader, you need to focus on yourself first. You need to learn about yourself first. You need to develop yourself first and then you can lead others. So then we focus on empowering others. And what does this mean? Communicative and effectively. Communication is a very crucial point in order to be able to uh, have a human relation, right? And to be, to be able to grow, to be able to do business, to be able to, com to relate in a society, you need to communicate effectively. And this means also uh, putting yourself in different scenarios. So for instance, in ISAC, you're going to be developing this part in a lot of ways. If you're a team leader, you're going to be leading a, a team meeting, for instance. So you'll have to communicate effectively with your members during the team meeting so that you can actually transmit the correct messages for them. You can actually create the motivation that they need or support them in the way that they need. Also, maybe you'll be delivering sessions in an LC meeting or in a conference. Uh, so you will have to be able to communicate effectively with an audience. Or maybe you will need to go to have uh, meetings with NGOs, for instance, or dealing with uh, problems with EPs so that you have to communicate effectively in a moment of uncertainty. So all of these scenarios are making you develop communicating effectively inside ISAC. Then developing and empowering others. This is something that in the team, in the team experience it's very important. It is actually developing the people that are around you. So helping them focus on their strengths and weaknesses, helping them, giving feedback so that they can grow, giving feedback so that they can improve, helping them uh, don't, don't be a, not being afraid of taking risks. So actually developing them in a, in a way that they can actually um, decide to take action for the things that they wish for and etc. And empowering them to go towards their goals, to go towards their passion. And the last one is exchange, engages for a bigger purpose. Yeah, now you're a team leader. This is crucial for you because you will have to lead a team that needs to have a common purpose, a common goal. And you will need to engage every single member in your team towards that goal. So this is one of the qualities that we think a leader needs to have. In, any leader needs to be able to inspire others and motivate others towards a bigger cause, to, towards a bigger purpose. So this is something that you as a team leader will be developing during the whole team experience. Then we go to solution oriented. This is a very useful one in life. Uh, and what does it mean? So adapting and showing resilience in the face of challenges. In Isaac, we mostly say that we don't have problems. We just have challenges, challenges that we need to face, challenges that we need to, uh, to do, take action towards. So in, this, in these challenges, instead of being frozen by fear, instead of uh, being frozen by hesitation on the taking a decision, we adapt to them and we show the resilience to go through them. So this is a very important part of the solution oriented. You're gonna have so many challenges as team leader of this team. I'm sure about this. But a true leader needs to adapt to those challenges and be resilient towards them and go through them, not just resign or, or, or freeze on and, and the face of challenges. Positivity through uncertainty is also a really interesting one. It means that through all these challenges, through all this uncertainty that you're going to have, you need to keep positive. This is a tricky one. You need to keep positive and actually be able to, to not transmit negativity. Because if you're a team leader and you're transmitting negativity, what will your, what will your team feel? Negativity. So you need to be po keeping positive about all of these uncertainties and all of these challenges. And the last one is taking risks. This is my favorite one. In Isaac, we have a lot of moments to take risks, right? Like you guys, for instance, you became team leaders because you took, took the risk of applying for this position, which is totally admirable. So in Isaac, we have this, this chance of taking a lot of risks. We have new opportunities, uh, opening OCs, maybe task force, uh, OCPs of recruitment, for instance, in my case, at PM. Uh, we have a lot of new opportunities and new roles that we can take. So taking these risks will allow us to actually develop the whole, the whole qualities of leadership. So, but we need to not be afraid to take these risks. And we need to understand that it is throughout the risks that we actually grow. And the last is world citizen. So world citizen is something that, of course, in Isaac, it makes sense because we are a world, uh, uh, a global organization. We have uh, ISAC in more than 120 countries and territories, but it's not only about connecting with people from other cultures and getting to know other cultures. It is also about believing that you can make a difference by 
facing the, the issues of the world and understanding that, yes, me as an individual, I can do something about them. And it's also not about just believing that you that you can make a difference, but actually enjoying taking this responsibility and enjoying taking the, the, um, the chance of impacting the world. And of course, being interested in world issues, being, knowing what's going on in America, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, having a clear understanding of what are the, face, the problems that the world is facing right now. So how do we develop actually these leadership qualities? We actually uh, have an action that we can take, which is lead sessions. Lead sessions, we talked about them in the, in the, in the phases of the theme standards. So basically, it is delivering a session that is totally based on one element of this LDQ. So it's not just about the whole leadership quality, but just one element of each. So you will choose one element, you will prepare a session for your team, and you will deliver it. So there's a, um, a couple of things that we can do. So first of all, we need to assess what are, these, what are the elements that our members need. So when the members feel the LDA, we know what, the th what are the things that they have as strong points, as weak points to, to make them develop them individually or as a, team, as a team. Then the content creation. So we will choose this element, we will create our session outline, and we just as a tip here, just review the global guidelines. We already have lead sessions for each one of these elements created from the global network. So it's, it's just about taking them and adapting them to your reality. And the delivery is choosing the right global, leader, um, global learning environment that we're going to be seeing in the last episode to deliver the session, preparing the materials, and actually delivering the session. So how, some tips and tricks just to finish this. So let's learn the four leadership qualities with each one of the elements. You as a team leader need to understand this. Identify the strong and weak elements of your team and tackle them in one-to-ones or as a team. Identify your own points of development and lead by example and showcasing I showcase how you are working on this development. So if you are weak in self-aware, maybe you can showcase with your team how much work you are doing towards self-awareness. Then use the existing material. Do not waste, waste time and energy creating something different. Just you can innovate on the activities to be done during the session, and it can be good. And also make your members provide lead spaces for the EPs so that they can learn by teaching. So if you are OGX, maybe you can put your members to deliver a lead session in an OPS, or if you're ICX, they can leave the, do a lead session in an IPS, for instance. If they, if they teach about it, they will learn faster. So what is the final checklist? Make your members take the initial LDA, review the results for each member, and identify the points of development. Create a timeline for providing the lead sessions for your team, in which moment it is better to develop each one of the elements. Track their development in the monthly one-to-one. Plan your own development and showcase it and ensure all your members feel the LDA at the end so we also see the difference between the start of the team experience and the end. So that was it, guys. Some, some more information, you can find it in the Isaac Way booklet that I'm leaving you here. And this was all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching.